some of the buttons from the panel. One time it fell off accidentally in the middle of her scene, and she was Three like, Three times what was in a that? row. And then I did it purposely. <laughs> um, I meant to bring it here and drop it today. It's like the most annoying uh, sound I've ever heard. We are an explorer. It's easy to forget how awesome that is. Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming in uh, to talk with me. Um, you're here, obviously, for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Uh, this is, you're going into your third season. Do you feel like you've hit a Star Trek groove? Do you feel like you, you feel comfortable on the Enterprise and, and you know what you're doing now when you're doing the show? Sirs? Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, yes and no, because I feel like every episode is such a surprise to us, and they're so good at playing with genre that we we never see it coming. So we didn't think we could outdo season two with some of the things that we pulled in season two, and season three we're equally proud of, and we did some things. You did some things. Can you maybe tease a little bit about what genres we might be seeing for this season because the show so famously jumps from genre to genre. And just know we will be putting this up after your panel. Well, so, I mean, as some folks might have seen, uh, we've taken mm, body shifting to uh, new heights. Um, you know, we uh, uh, have a bunch of ideas for the kinds of genres Star Trek can accommodate. And we continue to try, sort of try to stretch those boundaries. So. Um, as you saw today, a lot of people become Vulcans, um, and uh, we are trying to, dare I say, go where we have not gone before when it comes to genre. So besides the tried and true, which is you know some sci-fi adventure, and uh, certainly our attempt to remember the cadence of at least regularly, there must be a moral to the story. Uh, we are uh, we're we're spreading our wings, uh, and we hope you'll like it. Ethan, what was it like? I presume you were teaching people how your your fellow actors how to be Vulcan on set. What, like, what was it like to have several of your co-stars suddenly <laughs> be Vulcan? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't know I had to worry about job security until that moment, <laughs> um, and it was kind of shocking to see everyone as Vulcans because I know them so intimately, having worked with them for several seasons. So to see them in Vulcan makeup was sort of endearing. I had this really bizarre and surprising sense of of this is family because I've been so sort of isolated as a Vulcan on the show, for the most part. Of course, we have uh, to bring who's Vulcan, but she's so infrequently on the show. Um, and yeah, I did, I did hand out a little bit of advice, but people really brought their own flavor and ideas to it, and I thought they were each very unique and, and well-developed. So and also, he's excited. only half Vulcan. So <laughs> this, is, this is a great <laughs> they point. They were playing full Vulcan, which is, you know. At which they reminded him of Constantly. multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> so I was still an outsider. Yeah. And Anson's hair, whose idea was that? That was, that was Anson. That was 100% Anson. We, we, we were talking about what different types of hair to do. And he said, I have this one idea. And then he, I was like, just try it. And he did it. And <laughs> Akiva and I looked at him. We were like, that's 100%. Don't bother <laughs> trying anything else. We have to do this. We, we had, you know, because you see, you know, People try different things. And there were these standard, what you might imagine, Vulcan hairdos for Anson. And then there was that. <laughs> and Anson is the author of all things hair in yeah. his character, uh, and yeah. it lands. It was very fun to play off of, to see you know, your friends. I mean, for Una to see, she didn't she'd never see you know, Captain Pike becoming that brand of Vulcan. No one ever saw that coming, you know what I mean? And all of them were kind of a surprise, so it was really fun playing off of that. Um, I, I, you know, we at Variety reported that you also have a murder mystery episode that's coming up. <laughs> but oh. Can you tell me about that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, again, we found an opportunity to dig into genre in a way that is uh, endemic to our show, right? That, that's the trick, just as we tried very hard to make singing reasonable within story. Uh, so too is a murder mystery reasonable within story. But of course, it's also an opportunity for this extraordinary cast to do things they haven't done before and play other characters, uh, which they do uh, with delight. I think this is one of the great episodes of the season. 
That's like our not so secret secret weapon is that when we, we, we talk about different genres, but really the thing we spend a lot of time thinking about is what can our actors play that is new and different and fun for them to try. And I think that's like, that's the thing that brings these episodes up and above uh, other episodes. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for so that. Fun. <laughs> there was money if we said that. <laughs> okay. Uh, both of you had a lot of fun actually in the musical episode. I'm wondering if we might see more singing in season three. No more singing. <laughs> I was like, who's going to break I, the news? Okay. I think we can't answer that as the real answer. Right. right. No, what no, I would say is we that, uh, that, that <laughs> we, we do not do a musical, but there are a lot of other kinds of performances that you have not seen before that will surprise you. Okay. 100%. Nice. Yeah. nice well done. Answers. Well done. <laughs> no more singing. So um, I think, you know, the, the season two ended on a cliffhanger, uh, the sort of classic Star Trek cliffhanger. Um, how... Uh, much further into the season will that cliffhanger resonate? I, I mean, I'm going to just straightforward say it, we were trying to do something that was classic to Trek. And when you come back for the second part of a two-parter, it always says the conclusion of. So come into season three. I promise you, you will see the conclusion of. Got it. And you've got, uh, you know, one of the great things about the show is that you, uh, you're sort of serialized, but not at the same time because you're you know you have each episode is very distinct but you sometimes bring characters back or you sort of like you know carry a thread through is there any sort of beloved characters from the first two seasons that we might be seeing again well a, as we said in the panel which hasn't happened yet but in theory <laughs> has, uh roger corby is uh going to be joining the cast uh as a character um and uh or roger corby well, but you know, like so many of our characters, uh, they have really great days before they're less great days uh, in TOS. So um, our take on Roger Corby is uh, not quite what you would expect, um, and, uh, and that's fun. And we, uh, we try to really focus, though, as much as possible on our main cast, because there are a lot of them. Um, and their stories deserve uh, a bunch of real attention, and so the more we bring in other folks, the, sometimes the harder it is to really keep focus. Mm -hmm. um, so now and then someone will work her, but I, I, it's not a, it's not a, I wouldn't be looking for it. There is a nice uh, tradition in Star Trek of having actors play different characters also, and so we loved having Bruce Hemmer, um, sorry, Bruce Horak playing, who played Hemmer in the first season. Yeah came back as one of the boy banders at the end of the musical episode. <laughs> um, so I, it's, we have so many actors that we love having on our production, we just want to figure out ways to bring them back in other ways. You also have Scotty this season. What was it like for you guys to have him uh, on, uh, to play off of this, this year? Terrific. Yeah, he's um, so great. He shares a load of science jargon, so <laughs> that's very appreciated from my end. Um, and I think there's a lot of fun things to do between Spock and, uh, and Scotty, so. Did you work much with Martin? Yeah. 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 He's yeah. great. Yeah. He brings a great energy to the cast. So <clears throat> you've got Spock, you've got Kirk, you've got Uhura, and now you've got Scotty. How much further are we going to take this to bring uh, characters from the original series into Strange New Worlds? Sulu? Are you talking about Sulu? I'm wondering. What I'm wondering myself. It's probably, it's probably worth mentioning that these characters are not the people that they will become when we get to the original series. They are still younger. They are going through things. They have a lot of life and lessons to go through. They have, uh, they, they have some growth to do. So you don't see them exactly the way that you would see them later on. And that's important for our, us to have, give them something to play. And we will continue on for as long as Paramount lets us. Yes. Uh, so we'll drive right into the original series, given our druthers. Oh, I thought you were going to say, we'll drive it right into the ground. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and when it goes down, it's That's where you're going. We're going to we're, really we're, drive we these will. into the we're ground. We're close. Uh, I was lucky enough to be on uh, the set of Strange New Worlds earlier this year, and uh, the level of detail in, across that set is just astonishing. I'm wondering for, the, for you guys, um, what is some of the fav your favorite like things that the camera is never going to pick up, but is sort of there just for you that you really hone, hone in on. I mean, all of the panels on the bridge, for instance, are practical. <laughs> What's so funny? I, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> the thing that you always drop when it's one of my 
lines. Oh, no. I meant to bring one, by the way. Um, and they gave me some. So, they look like little, like, jujubes, and they she's always referen fall. She's referencing uh, some of the buttons from the panel. One time it fell off accidentally in the middle of her scene, and she was Three like, Three times in a that? row. And then I did it purposely. <laughs> um, I meant to bring it here and drop it today. It's like the most annoying uh, sound I've ever heard. But so the panels on the, on the bridge are practical, which I think a lot of audience members might think are, are added in post. And to have that there is, it just saves your, your focus and imagination for other parts of your acting. So I think that's a really amazing detail. And, like, and the, the graphics are very well thought out. Sometimes we need, um, you know, they have to help us learn how to use them and so we understand exactly what we're looking at. But I think we all had a real moment walking onto that bridge set for the first time. Like the first time Anson and Ethan and I stepped onto the set of the bridge, which is truly a 360 degree with the ceiling and everything. It, it, actually, Ethan said, it feels like we're in Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. it's, such a, it's such a huge moment the first time you step onto that set. Were you able to visit the bridge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You no, know, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's terrific. It, it, Melissa has become like the sort of the, the best person to train other people on how right. to fly the ship. There's a whole sequence. Melissa with, Navia. Yes. yes. There's a whole sequence yeah. of Spock this year where she took you aside to talk about like, oh, no, no, this, when you turn this this way, it only works this way, and you do this. It's incredibly detailed. None of this is specific. So much of it is, comes from you know, what's on the panel and what she has come up with. Um, but it's, I mean, it's become canon at this point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I also was on the, the, new, the new set, the science set, with, science lab, with yeah. a water pool on, in the floor. What was your reaction when you saw that? Because I, I was... My reaction was, who's going to get in? Who's going to ever be in that pool? <laughs> like, what, what's the pool for? We're not going to tell you. Oh, OK. <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say that you will see some things in the pool this season. What? Good. We'll oh, see yeah. some things. Oh, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's Breaking news. After after you <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the things we do after you Because <laughs> you're done shooting season three now. Yes. 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 Um, I, I, the, we're, we've got a question we've been asking everybody um, uh, that's coming through here. I would love to know what's on your watch list. What are you watching right now? Uh, I'm a big Hacks fan, and I'm watching The Bear right now. I really enjoyed Fallout. Oh, I loved Fallout. I loved Fallout. And actually, I got to meet Aaron Moten with the star of Fallout a few weeks ago. He's a wonderful guy, super talented. Love that show. What about you guys? I, I love Fallout. Yeah. I watched Beverly Hills Cop um, because I'm old and <laughs> enjoyed it. Axel, yeah. the new one? The, the new, new one. one. Oh, yeah. cool. I got to check it out. Uh, and, uh, and I will soon be watching Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, yeah. Oh, me too. Yes. yes. I'll be there. My final question, I'm going to put you guys all a little bit on the spot, and I want you to tell me your absolute number one favorite episode of Star Trek that's not on Strange New Worlds of all time. Easy. City on the Edge of Forever. Oh. I, I mean, can it be a movie? Yeah. The Wrath of Khan. I loved it. Nice. Um, Star Trek is a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's a toss up between Inner Light and Measure of a Man. Oh, Inner Light is close, darn. I was like thinking, I was trying to think of a Deep Space Nine one because that's what, but I feel like the, it's the Visitor is the one I'm thinking of, if I'm remembering correctly. This is the title where we, yeah, it's an amazing episode. I can point to like a four or five of those episodes that really, really affected me.